there everyone joe brady here with you again today and i've just returned from spending three lovely days photographing waterfalls in northeastern pennsylvania and occasionally actually frequently we ran into things like this really it's a perfect exposure but it looks dreadful is there a way to get the photograph out of here and obviously the answer is yes or i wouldn't be here with you right now but let's take a look at the histogram up here now We've got a histogram that runs all the way from the left, including something that might be pure black. But oh, yeah, if you hit the shadow clipping thing, you can see these blue areas underneath the falls. Yeah, it's underneath rocks. Fine. It can be pure black. But over here, even though it looks really bright in this part of the cascade, you can see it's not clipping on the right. So that means we have a composition and an exposure that both work. In fact, they're probably the best they could have been because you can see our histogram runs from left all the way to the right. So let's go through the process to convert this into something worthwhile. So first thing I'm going to do is make a virtual copy so I can bounce back and forth for you. So again, here is our image. First thing, obviously, let's just cut to the chase, bring the shadows all the way up, bring the highlights all the way down. That's flattening out the image. Now we have some headroom up in the highlights to bring up the exposure. So let's go ahead and see how far we can get. And well, heck, that's looking actually pretty good so far. However, we've lost, what have we lost? We've lost color, we've lost contrast, we've lost direction of light to really shape the thing. So let's move down to presence and presence is going to add texture and a little bit of sharpening on different parts. Texture is very fine sharpening. Clarity is sharpening of midtones. That adds that. Dehaze will get more into the shadows. I don't know if this needs dehaze. I actually think we're going to leave it alone. But it does need some vibrance and saturation. So vibrance is keyed into cooler and desaturated colors. We've got a lot of greens in here. So let's go ahead and bring that up to bring them back to life. And then let's bring up the overall saturation. And... You know, not too shabby. It's starting to get better, but now we need to do some shaping. We want the viewer to go to the falls. So how do we do that? Well, we've got other areas that are very bright. If we look up top here, that's bright, bright down here, bright here. We want to help to guide the viewer to the actual falls. So we're going to use some brushes to do that. So let's come up to the masking panel and we'll choose a brush. And notice there's a K here, which means you can just hit K on your keyboard to get to the brush. And we're going to do that from now on. But right now I'll just choose brush. I'm going to leave auto mask on for now and we'll leave it at full power. And I'll make it a little bit smaller. So I want to select these areas that are just too bright. And it's okay if it looks like it gets sloppy because keep in mind, there's also a feather that's actually 50% that's going to smooth the gradations out. So I'm just going to pick all these areas on the edges that maybe are just a little bit of a distraction. This thing down here is too bright. The bottom right of the image is a little too bright. Let's start out with this. Actually, the entire background back here is a little too bright. So let's get all of that and let's bring the exposure down. Let's see what happens. So we bring that down and looking a lot better already. Now, as I look at it, I'm thinking it actually might look a little too green. What do you think? So how do we counteract that? Well, we're going to add a little bit of magenta back in. You can see we can add a lot or a little. And as we do that, it makes the rocks go a little more neutral. So it did need a little bit of magenta in it. And we might deal with the ones up here as well separately again. But we still made a, a lot of progress. Let's hit K again, which resets our brush. Now I'm going to get this top thing up here, and it appears a little bit too blue for me. So we're going to add some warmth. So I'm going to add some yellow into there. Yeah, that looks better. And it is green, so we'll add some green. And I think this might benefit from a little dehaze just to darken that up. Okay, that's looking better. What else? I think we do need to do a little bit more fine-tuning to get the viewer to the waterfall. So how can we do that? Let's draw with some light. So I'm going to get a brush again and choose these areas in here and right down along the falls. And let's see how what happens if we 
open up the exposure on this a little bit. Yep, that's helping a bit. Also, overall color-wise, I think the entire thing might need a little warmth in the middle of the image. Uh, while we're at it, let's hit K again. I still think this piece right there, that right there, and again, since I have auto uh, mask on, it's only picking the areas that match the tone of what I'm clicking on. I'm looking for these really bright things that really need to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going around and clicking on them as I see bright stuff that I maybe want a little darker. So let's bring that down. Okay, that's getting better. And maybe this rock in there was getting a little bit too bright as well. I think that helped. Actually, even in here, still a little bit more. So now we're getting, now we're starting to get some shape where we need it. I'm going to darken in here a bit. So basically what we're doing is what we did in the darkroom way back when. We're burning and dodging. Nope, don't like that last one. We'll leave that bright. And even in the water there. And this little bit and that one leaf. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. Now we're going to hit K again. This time I'm going to turn off auto mask because I just want it to go wherever I paint. Kind of through here. And what I want to do is warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to add some yellow to it. Let's bring some yellow in there. And let's boost, some, boost the contrast back up a little bit. Let's see what that does. So there's less contrast, there's more. Now if we make it more, we're also going to have to bring up the exposure on it. And as we do that, I'm going to add a little bit more warmth, and maybe a little saturation as well. Okay, I like the color in the middle. I think maybe the whites of the falls got a little too bright. So let's bring down the highlights and the whites a little bit. Okay, could we do more? Yeah, you know what though? I'm kind of happy with where we are. What, what remains to be done is to work on the composition. This needs to be cropped. So let's hit the R key, which is the crop. I'm not gonna choose a standard frame size. I wanna see what this thing needs to really make it work. So a little bit less on the bottom. And I think vertically, up and down, it needs less. So let's come in here to really emphasize the falls. Now they are kind of in the middle. So do we want it on the right or the left? Does it look better over there or over there? You know, I think it looks slightly better off to the right a smidge. Let's try that. I do like that. And the reason I like it is because the falls is falling from the upper left across to the right, but then making a left-hand turn back in. So I think that works. And the last thing I really want to do to this is come down to effects and add a nice deep vignette. And I think that's looking pretty good. So let's take a look at that at full screen. So there's where we are now. And if you've forgotten already, I'm sure you have. That's the rough file we started with. And we turned that into that. And I think we have something that really works a heck of a lot better. That's it for today. There's a lot more of this stuff to do. And we're going to pursue this, especially when we, as we start up the photo kitchen, we're going to go through the thought process on how you can make an image flow better. It's not just about using the tools. It's what you need to do to transform those bland raw files into a beautiful photograph. That's it for today. I thank you for joining me, and I'll see you online again soon. Till next time, be well. Bye-bye.